When you're a cybersecurity defender, you're not always required to just be passive, set up your defense, and hope that the attackers don't break through. You can have a form of active defense. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about anti-siphons infosec training, active defense and cyber decision that is taught by John Strand that I just finished going through. I'm going to tell you who it's for, why it's awesome. And at the end of the, each of the four days in the training, I did a video diary. So you're going to be getting straight information directly from a student who is going through it as it progresses. It's an amazing training. You're not going to want to miss how you can take this training for whatever price point is comfortable for you. Let's go. Hey, everybody. So I had the extreme pleasure of being a student in John Strand's active defense and cyber deception class. And really, I took so much out of it, both from a technical execution perspective, lots of hands-on tools, lots of labs, very, very in engaging, but also an appreciation for when is it appropriate to do active defense? And really, where is the line that you, if you cross over, you're actually becoming a criminal and an attacker, and it's totally inappropriate? Some, we covered some legal cases and to understand some of the nuances where it's not really crystal clear uh, in the world of cybersecurity. It's not always like good guys and bad guys. Sometimes there's arguments that the people who are acting bad are actually acting bad in the context of being good. I know that's crazy, but trust me, it's really good. So what is this training? This training is a four-day, four-hour, pay-what-you-can training, meaning you can pay from zero all the way up to, I believe, $495. Um, this is intended, uh, and this is John's uh, intention, to be accessible to anyone. So it doesn't matter if you are a, a working uh, mother of three who can barely make ends meet, but you really want to take this training. And it doesn't matter if you are in Indonesia or it doesn't matter if you work nights, doesn't matter. This is accessible to you. And that's very important to John. And you can tell that he is very, very passionate. This is one of three trainings that he offers in this pay what you want model. Uh, and this one is intended to be kind of the third of the three trainings, although there are no prerequisites. So what exactly is it? In the course, over the four days, you cover several techniques in order to delay, deter, and frustrate attackers. And ultimately, when an attacker gets detected, they oftentimes will just move on to another target because they feel that they've been compromised or you know their, their shadowy cover has been busted. Also, you can have attribution of where the attackers are, so you can provide that to law enforcement if that's something that you're into in order for them to take it to the next level and have legal intervention. Now, who is it for? Now, I would say really the intended audience, although they, they put it in the training or in the marketing material that's for like web app developers and uh, IT people and a whole various uh, groups of people. But really what I would say is if you are doing information security, and you're responsible for protecting an organization in any capacity, whether it's you work in IT, you're a network engineer, firewall engineer, CISO, whatever it is, um, the techniques that are taught in this class and the topics that are covered are very appropriate to level up those people's game and really give them like a, a whole other tool in their toolbox, right? It's not like, you know, to use a golf analogy, it's not like you got your drivers and your irons and you're just adding another iron. It's like adding, adding like a special you know, a sand wedge type thing that it's used for very specific purposes and it's really different than anything else in your toolbox. So I would really think it's those people. If you don't have a strong technical background, you can walk through the entire course because John will explain everything and walk through all the labs with you. So you can get some exposure and appreciation, but I feel like the, the people who will take the most away from it are people who have some technical background and have worked a bit in an IT environment, uh, either in IT or information security. So why is it different? One of the interesting things that I really appreciated about this training is, and I don't know if John did this, I'd be curious if he did on purpose, but one of the interesting things about the training is that of the four days, John will do, it's a four hour per day. John will do a lecture on why we're doing what we're doing. Then he'll do a lab that has a tool that you'll be able to implement in your own environment um, that kind of reinforces or, or you know, 
you know, operationalizes whatever the theory was that he was just talking about, right? Like honey ports, right? So you use honey ports to frustrate and um, exhaust a attacker's resources. Now let's use a technical solution and put honey ports in place. Very, very cool. And then uh, it, that's kind of deep and really, really heady. And then John, at the end of all the days, would do some type of meta type lecture, right? So one of the days it was like, you know, you need to be careful if you're going to be doing these things because there's real consequences, right? If you're dealing with a real serious bad criminal uh, and you identify where they are located physically, because that's one of the techniques you learn, you can put a pin on a map of where the person's keep sitting at their keyboard and you get them arrested, they may have a, 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 a vin, vin, vindictive, they may be vindictive, they may want revenge on you, right? Like they may, John told some personal stories that he knew of where, you know, people got letters in the mail uh, with photos of the, you know, the person's family with uh, the kids circled, right? Their heads circled, right? So it's very, very real consequences. So he wants to impart that you're not supposed to just go buck wild and throw everything at the wall. You've got to be deliberate and you've got to plan it out accordingly, right? Not all of them are um, that level of consequence, but they can be. You know, another one we talked about legal court case and legal precedent and protecting yourself. So ho hopefully you get, it's like, that's really kind of what the, the structure was. It was like theory, operationalizing the theory, and then some meta element of actually practicing active defense. And I want to point out that you can do all these labs and you can get all the uh, PowerPoints and stuff online right now. John makes it all open source. I'm considering doing a bunch of videos of each of the tools that he highlights, but what makes it really different and why you may want to consider taking this training instead of just doing it independently on your own is John he is incredibly passionate about active defense. He literally wrote the book on it. And you can tell he's passionate about it. He's got a story for every single situation, every single circumstance, um, use cases built in practice. And it really, you know, gets you excited to want to learn these techniques and understand kind of where these things fit into the larger picture of a cybersecurity program. Absolutely fantastic. And for the price point of $0 up to whatever you can pay, um, you know, there's no reason for you not to want to take advantage of this. So just, you know, the key takeaways that you do get from doing the actual course, I would say that you learn a ton of tools that uh, you may not have known of. All of them were open source, meaning you don't need to pay for anything. You can get these uh, and help put them in your environment. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, the spider trap one, personally, I really, really enjoyed. You do get a better understanding of the legal landscapes, as I mentioned, and how to have the conversations with leadership um, about how to put these things in place. Because if you just walk into the CEO or the CISO's office and say, hey, I want to identify where bad guys are physically sitting, you might get some pushback. But if you can you know, explain what the benefit is and what the, the business value could be of implementing honey pots or honey ports or honey users. Um, you, you know, you can take that with you and really get support from your organization. So absolutely fantastic. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to let Jerry from the past talk to you right now about, you know, the specific nuances of each of the classes and what the experience was after each day. Let's go into the video diary. You can see right here, uh, the Discord uh, is awesome. All the students are using Discord. It's very chatty. It's very collaborative. Even though I'm a distance student, um, it very much feels like, you know, you're in a classroom with others, like certain people you kind of talk to a little bit more often. Uh, you know, bouncing jokes around in between sessions and stuff like that. John's got this amazing, you know, 100 page plus um, document that leads the actual class. So, I mean, the format has been consistent uh, yesterday and today, and I would assume it will continue through days three and four. It starts off uh, of an hour pre-show, like so class starts at noon, but uh, noon Eastern time. And for me, it really opens up at 11. The students come in. Uh, you know, you get in there between 11 and 12, so people start straggling and talking. There's pre-show banter with um, Deb Wigley and, and Jason Blanchard and, and John Strands in there as well. It makes it very um, lighthearted. You kind of get into the mood of like, yes, like it's not just like sit down like when you like walk in cold into a classroom or when like the webinar starts and they just start spewing knowledge at you. It really gives you a nice kind of transition into the mindset and like the 
comfort bubble that you build of like, this is what I'm doing. These are the people I'm dealing with. And this is very chill right now to kind of ease into it. I absolutely love that. Following that session starts a the, the lecture and lab series led by John. <clears throat> the sessions are 50 minute long and then 10 minute break. We don't break for lunch because there's people in Taiwan, people in Nigeria, people in Canada, like there is no lunch for the class. It's 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off. And if you need to get something, uh, you get up and go get it. But there's plenty of time. It's usually like maybe 20 to 30 minutes of speaking and walking through and, and looking and then 20 minutes of lab time, which is plenty of time to uh, accomplish the labs. And then John comes back and actually walks through the lab with you, giving context, giving um, explanation and understanding of why things are working the way they are. And uh, for some of these deceptive techniques, how he has seen them work in the past. Specifically, uh, to use an example from today's class, we did a, a, an app called Spider Trap, which basically tricks attackers who are using uh, doing web app testing because they're going to use like scanners and those type of tools it catches them into like an infinite loop and it exhausts their resources it exhausts their time it's incredibly easy to set up and it's a lot of fun frankly um, to run so you know john explains that you play with it and then he explains uh, how he's used it and you know things to watch out for you got to be careful because of x y and z so very very good value now following the uh, lectures in, in, in lab and, and 10 minute breaks at the very end, John does a 30 minute AMA. And I mean, when I'm saying they just rip the lid off and it's AMA instantly questions flowing in the best part. And I really want to take, I want to take this away for when I do AMA videos personally, John answers the question. He, he never really goes more than about 90 seconds to two minutes on a response, unless it really warrants additional response. And if he needs to show something, he'll show it in real time. He's sharing his screen and stuff. And then he moves on to the next question. I mean, he must have answered 50 questions in the 30 minute window. I mean, he was just ripping them off, ripping them off, ripping them off. So we just got finished with day three and it was an absolute blast, right? I thought day two was awesome. Day three is even more awesome. So just to give you a quick rundown, I uh, started the day off with uh, port spoofing. And this is like basically to make it so when you scan a box, like every port is open and essentially the way John said it is it's, it's, it's like making so much noise that it's really distracting. And, you know, the attackers are going to waste a lot of time looking at all these things. And it's actually kind of funny to see like port one, port two, port three, all 65,000 ports open. Uh, we did that for a bit. You'll do that in a lab. It's a lot of fun. And then on top of that, uh, we used a tool called Calry, which is actually like not just uh, a little bit of a honeypot, but it's like a full honeypot where you can SSH into it. You trick the, the attacker into logging into it. And then here's the best part. It logs everything they're doing. And when they think they logged out of the shell, uh, they're still logged in. So then whatever they're doing, um, you know, if they're going to like root into another box or pull down malware or do or whatever they're doing, you're getting logs of it completely. And you can bundle these things all together to, you know, do smart stuff like uh, in real time, alert you and firewall rules and stuff like that. But it's absolutely awesome when you're doing the lab. And I commented in chat with a couple of the other students, like one of my favorite things about this course so far is like all of the labs are silky smooth, like super elegant. If you've ever done labs or pulled down uh, code from GitHub, you know, you'll get like dependency issues or you got to download something it just doesn't work it's clunky sometimes and it's frustrating like john's labs all of them you like you 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 do like three things and you're up and running it makes you feel like it's so accessible and instead of focusing on the underneath crap of getting it to work which has nothing to do with the actual lab you just do the lab and you see the effect and the power and the utility of it for your environment i absolutely love it uh, i thought it was a one off yesterday when he finished when he was talking about uh, you know, concerns that you should have if you're going to hack back. And I might talk about that a little later, but uh, today he actually spent the last hour talking about the legal ramifications and he used case study to outline that uh, one particular one. If a, you know, a sysadmin, can, can a sysadmin go into a student at a university's dorm room because they know that that uh, computer is actually being used to attack, you know, like google.com or apple.com. Legally, is that okay? Uh, if, a, if a teacher buys a stolen laptop and uses it, can the law enforcement turn on the camera and take pictures of her, 
even if she's, you know, indecently uh, uh, addressed, right? Uh, this is all interesting case study. And we went through that and then, of course, finished with the AMA. I am loving it. Again, like I said, I thought day two was baller. Uh, which was better than day one and day three is better than day two. Like my mind is going to explode uh, if day four one ups day three. So I'll see you on day four. Hey, what's up? So we just finished day four, the final day of the training. Uh, definitely had uh, a different vibe, right? So still great content, but you know, four days of training, it gets, you get tired. It's a lot of energy. John's obviously pushing hard. Um, it was good. Again, today we, we had a nice blend of legal and overhead kind of like meta about doing active defense and cyber deception, but also technical stuff, right? So like John does a blend every single day of some operational uh, administrative things to think of and technical things on how you can do it with the lab. So it's like a perfect, nice, uh, you know, spice blend every single day that leaves you um, contextually the way your mind is thinking uh, you don't get overwhelmed or burnt out on particular things. You're kind of firing on different uh, areas. Today, we went through that ACDC law and, and talked about that. And then we did canary tokens. And um, we did, uh, I, I had to miss part of it, unfortunately, because I had a meeting that I just could not miss. So I missed uh, some wireless stuff and doing honey shares. I bet you that was really uh, good. I'll have to check that out. Um, the final thing was um, using honey badger, which was incredibly impressive at being able to identify the exact GPS location of someone who runs it. So if an attacker takes a file, I mean, you could pinpoint it, give it to law enforcement and have them take it from there. John demonstrated it in class. Um, just overall, a fantastic fourth and final day. Final thoughts on the class. I would absolutely recommend this to anyone. The fact that you can pay whatever you want is brilliant. I'm thinking I might do some videos on the channel about the different uh, tools that he went over in the class. Again, this is all open source. His, all the labs are on GitHub. The, the VM is available for download. It's brilliant. John just puts it out there. I would say, yes, you can do it all for free uh, on your own time and in the lab, but getting John's stories and experience and context of all the different things really adds super value uh, to the, the training. So Final, final position, final rendering, if you will. Amazing class. Um, it's John's favorite of the three he teaches, and you can tell that he's super passionate about it. It's an absolute delight. It is four days, four hours a day. If you have the time, I, I can't, I can't encourage you enough that it's so worth it. Uh, it really opens your mind on how to improve your cybersecurity posture on low budget, low to no budget, and how to think differently. Because the final thing um, that he drilled into us is that like attackers are always thinking that they're the attacker. They're never thinking of themselves as the prey. So if you catch them in one of your traps, most attackers are gonna burn their entire system down and get the hell out of there because they, they feel like they've been caught. And that is not really the goal is to keep attackers out of your, out of your systems and networks. So again, excellent class, love it. Thank you so much to John. Deb, Jason, Anti Siphon, Black Hills, the entire crew over there. They they put on a fantastic experience. So that's going to do it. Go check it out for yourself. I'll, I'll drop links in the description below so you can uh, go check out the next one that they're offering and take advantage of it. Okay, until next time, stay secure.